besties welcome back to my channel or hi my name is Stacy if you're new here so for today's video I wanted to do like a little foundation roundup of all of the major new foundation releases this year so far I feel like for the first half of this year all the brands are coming out with new foundations but now it seems like it's slowed down a bit so I take a little breather and kind of like summarize which ones I think would be the best for like what type of people I also saw Julia Adams do a similar type of video I actually had this idea like before she came out with it but I just want to give her some credit since she did come out with that video before me sorry I've been a little bit MIA on YouTube lately. I've just been a little bit busy, but I have been working on my TikTok a lot more. And we just reached 2K followers on TikTok as well. So thank you guys. If you want to kind of follow me on there so you can see me when you miss me on YouTube, then definitely check me out. I'll link it down below. My TikTok is at the Stacy Chen. So if you want to see me compare and contrast the new foundations that came out this year, plus my own like personal ranking at the end, then just keep on watching. But before you get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this because it really helps out my channel. And it would really mean a lot to me. Now let's just get right into the video. So I'm going to kind of pair up the foundations that I think are similar and kind of compare and contrast those. First up we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation versus the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. So these are both super popular foundations and I also really like both of them so I highly recommend. Let's start off with talking about the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. So this I would say is a light medium to medium buildable coverage foundation. It starts off on the lighter side but you can build it up to a medium but you can't really build it up much more than that but that's not really the point. It gives a very natural skin-like finish. Maybe slightly on the more radiant side but honestly it's not radiant enough to be called a dewy or radiant finish at least on my skin it just gives like a natural very subtle glow also this foundation is packed with skincare as quite a few of the other foundations in here are i find that this also lasts pretty well on my normal to oily skin type i definitely get dewier throughout the day but it's not too greasy and it doesn't break down or bunch up anywhere also i feel like it does have some kind of blurring or smoothing benefits to it i just find it gives the skin an overall nice perfected look i would actually consider it pretty comparable to the giorgio armani luminous silk in terms of like how it looks on the skin the only con about this foundation to me though is the texture is a little bit hard to blend at first. Normally I like to blend foundations with a sponge but this one definitely blends better with a brush. It's kind of like a thicker serum-y type of foundation but that kind of makes it not glide as easily over the skin so it's just not as nice of an application process in my opinion compared to some of the other foundations in here. That's the only con with this but in terms of like how it makes my skin look and feel I feel like it's great. It also doesn't feel heavy on the skin so yeah highly recommend. And then next up we have its competitor which is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. So this one is also packed with different skincare benefits and again this one also has I would say a light medium to medium buildable coverage they're both very similar in terms of the coverage for me in terms of the finish I would say this is actually noticeably dewier so if you have drier skin I would definitely recommend this one over the Charlotte Tilbury one especially because the Charlotte Tilbury one can kind of drag during application whereas this NARS one is just going to glide over everything super super smoothly which is definitely a bonus but yeah if you're very oily you might want to steer a bit away from this I do find myself getting oilier by the end of the day compared to the Charlotte Tilbury one but if i want to go for a dewy natural look but still have my skin perfected more than like a tinted moisturizer this nars one is the one i would go for and also for me for my normal to oily skin as long as i set in the places i get the most oily it doesn't get greasy or heavy throughout the day so yeah overall this one's just more emollient so between these i would pick the nars one over the charlotte tilbury one unless you have a very oily skin type and you're very afraid of like looking too greasy or too shiny throughout the day then the charlotte tilbury one would be better for you i feel like the charlotte tilbury is more versatile across skin types whereas the the NARS one is definitely dewy, so it's going to work better for drier skin types, but even on my slightly oily skin, it still works perfectly fine for me. We like that dewy glass skin look. And there's a longevity in terms of like not caking, not breaking up, not getting weird patchiness or whatever. They both are pretty much the same to me. Okay, next up for my two competitors, we have the Kosas Revealer Foundation and the Dior Forever Skin Glow, and this is the reformulated version. So let's talk about the Kosas Revealer Foundation first. So in terms of the coverage, I would say it's actually a solid medium coverage. So it's definitely more than the Charlotte Tilbury and the NARS, especially upon first application. Like the coverage is on the fuller side of medium. So you're, if you're normally more of a glam makeup person or you just want more coverage, but you, you want that natural skin finish, this would be the type of foundation for you. So the Kosas concealer is also one of those skincare makeup hybrids and also has SPF 25 in it. So actually upon first wearing this foundation, I definitely liked it, but I don't think I was like super, super amazed. It kind of checked off all the boxes for me, but I was kind of being inundated with a bunch of foundations. So I was like, 
mm, I don't know if it's like anything super special but now actually this has become my most used foundation out of all of these because I just think that it's the most versatile so in terms of coverage if you want to like sheer out the coverage you just use less but if you use like a full pump which is like what I normally use you get like a fuller medium coverage so it has that range of coverage I like in a base product and then also the finish is a natural leaning radiant but more on the natural side definitely not too dewy or anything i think if you have oily skin you can definitely still wear this as long as you set your t-zone or in the place that you get the most oily this just gives the skin a really nice natural finish i just find that i reach for the charlotte tilbury and the nars on my better skin day since the coverage is slightly lighter whereas the closest one it kind of like covers up everything that you want to cover up while still looking very natural. That would be something that you would want to keep in mind. Like if you're a more like tinted moisturizer, I just want a super natural look girl, then I think you would like the Charlotte Tilbury or NARS ones better. Whereas if you're a person who generally speaking likes more glam makeup, so you want that more perfected base look while still letting it look natural, but you want to kind of elevate it to match the rest of your makeup, then the Kosas would be the one for you. So since I'm closer to that type of girly, I definitely prefer the Kosas. Now for us competitor here, I have the Dior Forever Skin Glow. First off, this Say that honestly I feel like these look very very similar on the skin so they both give that buildable but fuller medium coverage oh yeah something I also really like about both of these is that they just apply and glide over the skin super easily so the application is super creamy it's an A plus for me both don't really feel heavy on the skin they last eight hours if you set it if you're an oily skin person like me I feel like it would definitely work for most skin types unless you're very very oily the only difference is that the Dior forever skin glow has so much fragrance in it so that's what kills me about this because I'm not a super big fragrance fan in my like skin complexion products. The skin is like a more sensitive area, but I don't have any reactions or anything like that, but I also don't have that type of sensitive skin. So if that's you, you definitely want to steer clear away from this Dior one because the smell she's powerful okay it's just a classic like dior floral smell but it, this one is really strong because there's a couple other fragranced foundations in here that i'm going to mention and those are nowhere near as strong as this now the scent does dissipate as you're wearing it it's not going to last like the whole day but i would say it probably lasts like i don't know an hour maybe that's why you'll see in the ranking later it kind of like falls a little bit below like where it would have been if it didn't have a scent so that's kind of my thoughts on that but besides that they're basically the same in my opinion so you can kind of just pick and choose i guess in that sense the kosas is better because it's cheaper and there's no scent if you want to splurge on a dior product this is super nice this is the glowy version it is still really versatile on my oldier skin type it works super well lasts the whole day or at least eight hours for being called a glowy foundation it's actually not that glowy so if you if that's what you're concerned about it's not like that at all okay moving on we have the two more tinted moisturizer type products the it cosmetic cc cream nude glow and then i also have the rare beauty tinted moisturizer so starting off with the it cosmetics nude glow if you were a fan of the original it cosmetics cc cream which was like a total classic like cult favorite this is basically the original it cosmetics cc cream but less coverage. So the original It Cosmetics CC Cream was pretty darn full coverage. So if that was too much coverage for you, actually this It Cosmetics Nude Glow has a medium coverage and also it has SPF 40 in it and they also have some brightening glow serum. So this again has some skincare in it. So I would say this is again a light medium to medium buildable coverage. It also gives a more natural to slightly radiant glow. So the thing about this is that even though it is glowy, it actually lasts pretty well on the skin. I did an eight hour wear test on my channel. So actually I've done a wear test for like half of these on my channel so you can go check them out if you want to see more in-depth reviews yeah this lasts a full eight hours without getting too greasy and i actually don't really have to retouch this one yeah this is definitely a solid tinted moisturizer cc cream type of product if you're more into the natural makeup style i think you would really like this but to me it's just like not anything super special it's just like a good cc cream i don't have anything bad to say about it but i guess it's just like not knocking my socks off so i haven't reached for it as much oh yeah also this does have the same fragrance that the regular It Cosmetics CC Cream has, which is like this lemony citrus fragrance. I don't know if anyone else has like described that because I feel like I haven't heard people talk about it, but yeah, it smells like citrus, which is like kind of strange for a foundation. But yeah, just pointing it out that it does have fragrance in it. And now moving on to its contender, which is the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. This I would say is more of a light medium coverage, but it's on the lighter side. Like I would say this is the lightest coverage out of everything that I'm mentioning today. I wouldn't say it's a true light coverage, like it's not like MAC Face and body or like glossy skin tint not like that it's definitely going to make an obvious difference when you put it on your skin this also has spf 20 
anything in it that's like not enough so you would have to still put on sunscreen under actually you should be putting on sunscreen under any of these base products even if they have SPF so back to the foundation I would say that this does get a more radiant finish it's not a super dewy or greasy radiant finish also it's very thin and lightweight on the skin now I would say that this has the least longevity out of the things that I'm mentioning today it does make it to the 8 hour mark with powdering my t-zone but I would say it starts to kind of break up around my nose a little bit which I think a lot of people have that problem where it kind of like will start to bunch up a little bit there especially if you have oilier skin I'm not sure how well this would hold up also I find that because sometimes I have little textured areas some foundations will like cover that whereas other foundations will kind of like seep into the cracks of your skin if that makes sense this is making it sound like my skin is the Sahara Desert but it's really not I don't really know how to describe it properly but I feel like this rare beauty one kind of sinks into those like textural lines the most out of all of these but that's me being like super nitpicky that's like if I hold a mirror up to my face like super close so, yeah I would say this is a good tinted moisturizer but there was nothing that really amazed me okay last up on this list it's all by itself because there's no comparison in this list which is the makeup forever HD skin foundation so this is also a reformulation I can't really compare it to the original I never tried the original so I don't know anything about that but the reason why it's all alone is because this is the only like matte finish foundation out of all of these I think it's described as a natural finish on their website and on Sephora but I would actually consider it more of a natural matte so I can see why they're saying natural because it's not like a paint dry down matte texture that we're used to seeing of like traditional mattes it actually has like this moussey texture when you're applying it to your skin so it's very nice it's very airy it also blends out super easily but yeah the finish is definitely more on the matte side it's not gonna add any glow so if you have dry skin this might not be your favorite I've heard a lot of dry skin people raving about this for a matte foundation so take with that what you will but yeah I've actually been more into matte foundation recently I think just because of like Douyin makeup which is Chinese TikTok if you're not familiar they're very into the full coverage matte base look which I'm kind of like into now because it definitely like blurs over your pores so much look especially good like in photos and in videos so I have to say that holds true with this and also this was very popular on Douyin too it just gives you that beautiful airbrushed matte polished look I'm actually wearing this foundation today but it's actually not looking very matte because I added highlighter but I have to say as soon as I put it on it just like completely blurred over my pores so if you have pores type textural issues I feel like you will really like this foundation it just kind of glides over those and just covers them right up so I think this is a really good matte type of foundation okay the other thing is kind of interesting because it's definitely a medium coverage because right off the bat even though it's matte it definitely does not like cover over everything especially if you only use like one pump definitely can see like my freckles and things like kind of peeking through so if you're like a full coverage baddie you might not like this but I feel like this gives enough coverage and enough skin perfecting if you like to do full glam like I do especially if you like a more natural skin look that kind of makes it unique because it's a little bit harder to find like medium coverage matte foundations compared to like those full-on matte paint like foundations if that makes sense oh yeah this one also does have a fragrance but I have to say I actually really like this fragrance and it's very mild in comparison to the Dior one like that one's like whoop. I don't really know how to describe the scent it's clean but just noting that it does have a scent in case you're sensitive to fragrances because I have heard that some people had bad reactions to the fragrance in this so yeah that's about all my thoughts on all these foundations now to do a quick foundation ranking I think you can kind of tell by like how it's describing it throughout this video so I'm gonna go backwards in seventh place, I have the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. This one I would say has the most flaws in my opinion compared to the rest of these. I just want to give a disclaimer that I actually really like all of these foundations, but I think it's because I tend to buy foundations that I think I would like. And also I feel like my skin type is not super picky with foundations, so that's also something to consider. But yeah, so anyway, we have this Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. It doesn't last as long as the other ones, but it's still a pretty good solid tinted moisturizer. Like I don't actually have any like major complaints about this. And I wouldn't be like, oh my god, you shouldn't buy this. I feel like if you're on the market for a tinted moisturizer, it's good. But actually I would recommend the It Cosmetic CC Cream over it. So that's why this one is ranking sixth place. So this one actually like doesn't really have any flaws that I can articulate. I think it's just because it's not something super special to me so I haven't been reaching for it as much so that's kind of why it's there so yeah if you're going for a tinted moisturizer type foundation I would actually recommend the A Cosmetics one more because I just feel like it lasts better especially if you have oilier skin it just seems like a slightly more elevated formula next in fifth place we have the makeup forever HD skin foundation now that the weather is getting hotter this might be rising up since I am leaning towards matte foundations a little bit more but these all came out before the weather got really hot so that's kind of why it's ranking the way it is but 
maybe if you ask me like at the end of summer the ranking might have changed but yeah as of now makeup forever is in fifth place i really like it it's a great matte foundation but it still looks really natural for a matte foundation i actually like that it's a pretty nuanced formula it's a very in between so i feel like it's still pretty versatile even though it is matte so if you've been looking for a more matte foundation that you want to try out this would be a really good one to try. Okay, next up, we sadly have the Dior foundation. So this would definitely, I think, rank higher. Or I'm not sure, because now we're getting into the ones where it's like, it's really hard to decide. And these are the ones that I'm like using regularly in rotation. But this one is ranking fourth simply because the fragrance, like girl, she is strong, okay? Like I don't want to, when I use my foundation, I don't want to be like smelling like perfume. And also it's like old lady, like grandma perfume smell, you know what I mean? So it's kind of not the vibe. Like Other than that, it's a really, really good foundation. Highly recommend if you're looking for a slightly glowier foundation, but nothing too glowy, especially if you have oily skin. Lasts a solid eight hours. I wore this foundation on my birthday, so that tells you something. This foundation is definitely giving. I just hate the fragrance. If you want to feel like a bougie gal, like this is definitely something worth splurging on. But again, if you can't do fragrance for whatever reason, don't do this foundation. Next up, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. So I'm a Charlotte Tilbury stan, okay? But she has been beaten out by two foundations above her. So this one, it's called the Beautiful Skin Foundation. It makes your skin look beautiful. I have to say one of the biggest perks is that it's kind of undetectable on the skin. It's just super natural looking, but it still like perfects your skin more than like a tinted moisturizer. If I'm going through a time period where my skin isn't as nice, like if I'm breaking out or whatever, and I want to cover up more, like I wouldn't reach for this as much just because it does have a lighter, like a lighter medium coverage. So just keep that in mind. But if you're more of a natural girly, I think you'll really, really like this. And then in second place, we have the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. So this only beats out the Charlotte Tilbury one by a little bit. They're really, really similar but this one's just slightly dewier. The main thing I really like about this though is that it just like blends like so easily. I don't know how to explain because also I feel like the application is not necessarily super important but I feel like it actually kind of is important if you have like skin texture or things that like the foundation might catch on because that's when the application and how it's going on actually does make a difference. If you have textured skin, if you have dry patches, if you just need something to glide on over that and make it look smooth and radiant, then this is definitely the one for you. Yeah, also these two don't have any fragrance. Love to see that. It's just a really nice foundation, especially in the winter. So now that we're going to summer, I'm not sure if her ranking might lower a little bit because she might be a little bit too dewy for my preferences like in the summer especially because I do have slightly oily skin. Even if you have skin on the oilier side, I think you'll still like this as long as you remember to set it. Okay, and lastly, we have our final winner of the foundation lineup, which is, drumroll please, the Kosas Revealer Foundation. So honestly, she's gone viral on TikTok for a reason. I have to say, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like this is one of the most versatile formulas. I like that it has slightly more coverage than the, both the Charlotte Tilbury and the NARS, but that's kind of just my personal preference. It's a solid medium, but you can definitely sheer it out if you want a lighter coverage that day, but I do like that it's giving me that medium coverage like right off the bat, especially when I don't want to do a more perfected makeup look. It just makes your skin look super natural, like glowing from within. Not too radiant, it's less radiant than the NARS one. So if you have oily skin, this actually might be better for you. Yeah, it has skincare benefits in it. It's just all in all, it's a really, really solid foundation. I can't imagine someone disliking this. I, I mean, I'm sure like someone somewhere dislikes this. Whereas like with other foundations, I can like see how there might be issues given like your skin condition, etc. Like I'm just like this one, it just glides over everything. Super smooth, easy application, lasts eight hours, no fragrance. Like what more could you want from a foundation? That's about all I have for today. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like this video and comment and subscribe down below if you wanna see more content like this because it really helps out my channel and it would really mean a lot to me. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.